Hi guys, welcome to today's video. So, as you can tell from the title, in today's video I'm going to be reviewing the Tarte Shape Tape Foundation. I have the matte one here, I didn't get the dewy one because that's not my thing. I bought this myself off of Tarte's website, it's not through PR. I bought this foundation because a lot of you guys said on Twitter that you really wanted me to review it. Um, but obviously there has been a massive issue with the shade range of this foundation. So I did like consider not uploading this video, but then I thought I've bought the foundation. I may as well try it, you know, like it might suck. And then I can let you all know that it might be good. And then I can let you all know that. I just thought I would give you my honest opinions on this foundation in a video. Obviously the shade, the shade range just is awful. I think that whole issue is ridiculous. I don't really know why they ever thought that was a good idea, but if you want to see me review this foundation, then just keep watching. So, it's 2pm in the afternoon, um, I did have a little bit of concealer on, but I've just taken it off. The only makeup that I've left on is my top mascara, just because I couldn't be bothered to take it off. Like, I'm gonna, I'm not really doing anything today anyway, but I just really wanted to film this video because I have just got back from London, my Tarte delivery had arrived. Just in case anybody is wondering, um, I ordered this off the Tarte website myself. I got the Shape Tape Matte Foundation and then Tarte do ship to the UK. They normally have like a shipping fee um, and I did look for this foundation. Basically, you had to spend over £40 to get free shipping to the UK and the foundation was £35, so obviously they just wanted you to spend more. And then the cheapest thing they had on their website was £10, so I also got this little set thing which I don't even want and I'm probably going to sell on Depop because it was literally just an extra £10 that I didn't want to spend but I had to do that to get free shipping because otherwise I think the shipping was going to be like £14 so I thought I may as well just actually buy something instead of literally just spending that money on shipping if that makes sense. So I ordered this on the 16th and today is the 25th so it took nine days to arrive um, in the UK. When I heard that Tarte was making a Shape Tape foundation, I was really excited because I love the Shape Tape concealer, but then when everybody saw the shade range, I was like, what the hell? I don't get it. I don't get it. Tarte, why did you only launch three, not even three, one of them was just like, well they were all like kind of orange. I watched um, Patricia Bright's video and I watched Jackie Ina's video, um, and the foundations for deep skin are just not okay. So Tarte, if you're watching this, I just please ask that bring out darker shades and don't have like them as an afterthought. Just launch the foundation when it's when all the shades are ready. Don't just launch all the white ones first. Like I think they knew what they were doing. Like I don't I, I don't know. I just think it's awful. The shade range sucks, but I'm still gonna test it um, because loads of you guys asked me on Twitter to test this out, um, and as you guys know, I'm always honest about my opinions on things, so let's test out this little bad boy out. I've just cracked open a new, brand new beauty blender because my other one was getting so like broken and ripped because I've had it for like two years probably. <laughs> but have Beauty Bl Blender changed their like material or something because it feels different. So I didn't put any SPF on my face because I'm going to try and remember to do a flashback test. Um, so I went for the Shape Tape Matte Foundation. This claims on the back. Um, it doesn't claim anything on the back. Okay, there's no claims. Cool. I got the shade Fair Sand, which I believe is the lightest shade in the matte foundation formula. Um, obviously they've got the hydrating one, but I wasn't going to get that because I've got oily skin and I prefer like fuller coverage. So I went for the matte one. Um, they did have a different shade, which was more like on the pink tone, pink side. But because I'm more like neutral to yellow, I went for the one that was called Fair Sand. The packaging for this is pretty heavy. Like it's a glass bottle. Um, it's like a frosted glass and then it's got the same lid as the Shape Tape Concealer. So this is the Shape Tape Concealer and this is the foundation. I wear the Shape Tape Concealer in the shade Fair Beige but um, the shade Fair actually matches me better but I'm just trying to use up the shade Fair Beige. As you can see I've got a couple of like breakouts at the moment so let's see how well this covers. And just for shade reference my normal foundations that match me like pretty well are the Maybelline Superstay foundation in true ivory, which is the lightest shade I think. Um, also I wear the Revlon Color Stay foundation in the shade Buff, and I also wear the L'Oreal True Match in the, in the shade 1N. So those are my kind of normal foundations if you're trying to compare this shade to your skin tone. And if we're talking MAC, I have a MAC Studio Fix powder in NC10. 
um, and I wear this as like foundation, so yeah. I'm pretty pale, I'm not the palest, but I'm pretty pale. So let's give it a shake. Ooh, can you hear that click? My arm just clicked. <laughs> I really don't like this. Why could they not just put a pump? It's much easier to just put a pump on your hand and then spread that onto your face instead of keeping on having to dip into the foundation. I don't know if that's just me. Wait, I'm just gonna turn the brightness down a little bit because the sun is like, the sun is out today. So I'm going in with my brand new beauty blender which is literally neon pink. Like, if you compare this to my old one. <laughs> Okay, let's see how it blends. I don't really know if I've put enough on, but I can always add a bit more. Ooh. This beauty blender definitely feels way more dense than my other one. Like it's a lot harder. I don't really like it as much. Okay, so I definitely think I could do with putting a little bit more on because I didn't put as much on as I would with like um, my normal foundations. So far, that actually looks really nice. It blended really nicely. Um, with the amount that I put on, it's definitely not got full coverage. Like you can still see my blemishes and you can still see my under eye bags. Well, to be fair, I don't really put that much under my eyes. Um, so I'm gonna go in with some more. This is the thing with these type of applicators. I just find that you can't like, Put it on as thick, you know? Like, I wanna have a proper thick pump. I don't wanna put these like thin little layers on. That second layer has definitely given me a lot more coverage. Like, look at this. Okay, so now that I've put more on, I really like this. In terms of the shade, does that match my neck? I think it's actually a pretty good shade for me. I really, really like the finish, how it's almost matte. Um, it does remind me quite a lot of my Maybelline Superstay foundation um, with the type of finish. You can still see some of my spots are poking through, um, but in terms of coverage, like it does have really good coverage. It hasn't emphasized any dryness on my nose or anything. So far, I actually really like this. And obviously the main concern for me is it might look amazing now, but will it still look this good in like three, four, five, six, seven, eight hours? Who knows? Because my skin is oily AF and it just likes to, it just likes to ruin my, my face. I'm now gonna use the concealer just to go under my eyes a little bit. I don't need too much more under my eyes. I'm just gonna do a little bit, but that's usually enough for me. And then let's put some on these blemishes of mine. This beauty blender thing is so frustrating. Like I just want the old formula of the beauty blenders. Have they changed them or am I just being crazy? And when I say change them, I mean like since they first launched because I've had my other one for like quite a while. So now that my concealer is on, I'm just gonna powder the rest of my face how I normally would, um, and I'm just going to finish off the rest of my makeup. The powder I'm using is the Revlon Colorstay powder. I do find that it's like creasing on my eyelids quite a bit, so I keep having to like, before I set the foundation, I need to kind of like blend it in again. I do have to say, if you're looking for a very natural looking foundation, this is really not the one. Like you can tell that I'm wearing makeup. My skin does look very smooth out and flawless, but it does definitely look like I'm wearing makeup. Like it's not a natural looking one at all. So I finished off my makeup. I just did my brows contour, highlight, I topped up my mascara a little bit. I decided to just go with the top mascara today. Like I didn't go for any bottom mascara because I don't know, I'm kind of liking this look. So it's still like looking really good, really nice. I like the way it looks, especially around my nose. I feel like it made my nose look really flawless. Um, and just my skin in general looks really kind of airbrushed. One thing that I do want to say before I start my day and check back in with you is I have super deep set smile lines. Like even when I don't have any makeup on, you can still see my smile lines. Um, so foundation does tend to collect in them a lot and I find that issue with every foundation. Um, so sometimes I will kind of judge a foundation based on how much it settles into my smile lines but literally as soon as I put on a foundation, it just sinks in like, I feel like it's started to sink in a little bit even already or just like crease in my smile line area. I don't really know why that is the case and why I have such deep set smile lines at the age of 20, but um, yeah. I am gonna take some flash photos. I'm gonna take one on my camera. Let me take another one. I 
don't think it has flashback. It's kind of hard to tell whether foundations have flashback unless you like compare it to the rest of my body just because my skin is so pale anyway that I just think that could be the colour of my skin. I don't think it has flashback. I do really like the formula actually. I like the coverage. Um, I don't like the applicator. I kind of like, I can't, mm, I kind of like the packaging but I don't really like how it's glass because that makes it quite heavy to carry around but then I guess like it makes it more luxury feeling and if it was plastic then people probably complain being like what am I spending my money on? Um, obviously I hate the shade range, I think it is ridiculous and stupid and tart, like what are you doing? They better launch those new shades like now and I will check back with you in a few hours. Hey guys, so it's actually now been two hours since I put this foundation on. Um, the time is half past four. My Fitbit is still out of charge. I need to go and charge this. <laughs> so it's been about two hours that this foundation has been on my face. The foundation looks pretty much the same. Um, I'm not starting to get oily yet, which is good. Like I said that I thought it would happen, it has sunk into my smile lines a little bit, but so far that is the only kind of update. So it's now been seven hours. It is still looking pretty good. I am starting to definitely get oily around my nose um, and a little bit on my cheeks, mostly just like around my nose and on my nose and then a little bit on my forehead and between my brows as well, which I was, which is where I would normally get oily. Um, it is starting to, well it has sunk into my smile lines a little bit not too badly though, I've definitely had foundations that have creased in my smile lines a lot more. Wait, let me turn the brightness down. Oh yeah, and I added some lower mascara because I just wasn't feeling like myself. And I feel like I can't judge my face of makeup when I look different. I don't know, it was just weird. Um, so yeah, you can probably see my nose is starting to get pretty oily. So at this point I would normally like powder my face. But I think I'm going to leave it like it's starting to break up around my nose. As you can like see there and the same on the other side it's not too it's really not that badly sunk into my smile line sometimes i literally end up with like a thick line um but yeah it's also starting to like break up on my chin here um but to be fair overall like i don't look like a mess yet um I think it actually still looks pretty good. Considering this has been on my face for seven hours with no powdering, I am pretty impressed. Hi guys, so hopefully you can still hear me. I'm having to talk a little bit quietly because my mum has not gone to sleep. The time is like, it's about 10 past 11. So I've had this foundation on now for nine hours with no powdering. Um, and I am looking very oily, like especially on my nose. My nose is like the main area and then like this bit here between my eyebrows are like the main areas where it's got oily, but considering that I've been wearing this for nine hours without touching it up, like, it looks really good. I'm actually really impressed. Um, it hasn't sunk too much into my smile lines. It has like broken up a little bit around my nose. Wait, let me just zoom in. So yeah, you can see it's like broken up a little bit around the sides of my nose and my nose is looking really oily, like I would need to blot and then powder. Um, it has sunk into my smile lines, but literally like nothing crazy. To be fair, I haven't been talking that much today. Um, and then on my forehead, we are still looking a bit oily, but it still looks like smooth and my skin still looks like nice. Like it hasn't gone gross and separated. My chin has also like, it's gone a little bit funny on my chin, but it's really not that bad. Honestly, I'm a lot more impressed with this foundation than I thought I would be. Um, which sucks because I think it's overpriced, the shade range is awful, um, there's problems. Um, but, I mean, if you do have oily skin, you're looking for a good foundation. It is a good one. Um, is it worth £35? Not really sure about that. Like, I feel like my Maybelline one is pretty much just as good. I kind of want to do like a half and half, um, comparison between the two and see like which one lasts better. Um... So yeah, those are my thoughts. So that's it from me. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I hope you have found it helpful. Um, I really do want to try and find a dupe for this foundation. Um, so I'm gonna 
keep trying to find one and then I will probably end up doing like a half and half comparison of this with another drugstore foundation if I can jeep it um, because I do think it is a lot of money. If you did enjoy this video please make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want me to test out any other products then let me know down below um, and yeah that is pretty much it for me. If you, aren't already if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you subscribe if you want to be subscribed. If you don't want to subscribe, then don't subscribe and why are you watching me still? So I hope you are all doing well and I will see you in my next video. Bye!